Welcome back. You are listening to Nate the Hate on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and Google Podcasts. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And with that, I'd like to welcome in my co-host, Modern Vintage Gamer. Oh, hello, Nate. It's great to be back. I know I've been gone for a little while, and I do apologize uh, for the listeners out there. I know it's been a little bit since our last episode, at least that I was on. I know Nate uh, did have an episode previously. Uh, I just wanted to say that sometimes in game development, things get quite busy and it leaves me with an opportunity where I don't have as much time as I would like to record. But hopefully we are past all that now and we should start seeing more frequent episodes going forward. But it's great to be here, Nate. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be back and, and, and chatting. Yeah, it's definitely great to have you back. And as you said, the development industry, the game industry can be very busy and we know the GDC is just around the corner. So we are still in a very busy stretch in terms of industry events and such. But yeah, hopefully we are back to a more routine schedule coming up with April and moving forward throughout the year. And today's episode, we will be foregoing the stream labs due to the aforementioned issues, you know. We are on a fairly tight schedule on this evening of the recording. GDC is around the corner, as everyone knows. MVG does attend such events. So a lot of things he has to be prepping for in terms of GDC. So we're not going to keep him too long this episode, but we do have a lot to go over. And one of the topics we are going to talk about is the Nintendo Switch 2 with the news in the last couple of weeks regarding a delay to 2025 now this was originally reported on a brazilian podcast and it was very quickly further corroborated by outlets such as bloomberg vgc and nikkei that nintendo has chosen to delay the switch to at least internally to early 2025 with bloomberg and nikkei suggesting that the release could be as early as march of 2025 which would suggest that it could fall into a later portion of 2025. But that could also just be verbiage as a way for them to hedge bets in case that Nintendo does opt to delay the system further. But right now, it seems as though the expectation from all of these outlets and I guess their sources at various third-party partners or even potentially Nintendo themselves is that the system will be coming out sometime around March or early of 2025. And I do want to talk about this delay because this caught a lot of people off guard, definitely caught me off guard. As you had mentioned, John Linneman and myself did our Nintendo 2024 predictions episode a, about a week prior to that news hitting. And at that time, I was oper operating under the belief that Nintendo was still on track for a holiday you know november 2024 launch for the switch 2 and that even the reveal and announcement timing that had previously been relayed to partners remained on track and that information at the time was pointing to a march of 2024 announcement and when i had done some checks on that information it was done in the middle of january so it predates the news of the delay and even the information being relayed to partners by nintendo themselves so unfortunately that episode kind of aired at very a very bad window mm -hmm. because had i done it a week later obviously that information about it coming in 2024 wouldn't have been there and even that expectation of it being revealed this month wouldn't have been relayed. And that is something I have checked on since that episode has aired and with the news of the delay as to when could it be revealed, but we'll get into that a little later. So I want to focus primarily on the delay to 2025. And was this news shocking to you when you saw it become circulated a couple of weeks ago? Well, nothing really is a shock to me anymore in video games, Nate, because you know th there's been so many different things that have happened you know, over the course of the last few years, especially when we're talking about Nintendo. But I will say it was a surprise to to see those reports that, you know, the Switch 2, as we'll call it, 
uh, was delayed, and I'm using air quotes for that word delayed because obviously, you know, let's let's kind of address that. Nintendo has never announced the system, so it's very hard to throw the word delay around. But for the sake of this discussion and for the sake of the reports that came out, we're just going to, you know, throw that word delay out there and, and kind of go with it. But definitely a surprise for me. And I do question, I mean, I, and I know we're going to get into it uh, in this episode, but I do question what the the thinking is with Nintendo. It's very easy to say, to suggest, and my initial thought was to kind of come to the conclusion that, well, if the system isn't coming out until at earliest, you know, next year, March of, of 2025, then it only means two things potentially that, that have occurred here. Number one, the hardware is not ready. And that really does, doesn't really fit with what we've heard as far as Nintendo, uh, as far as NVIDIA is concerned. We have a pretty good, you know, comfort level that the hardware is done and it's ready. Now, of course, we don't have any confirmation that's true, but we have heard a lot of different rumblings. We heard about NVIDIA at Gamescom last year demonstrating, you know, the hardware. We heard about the Matrix demo. We heard about the features. We've heard stories about T239. And those kind of rumors have been around for, a, you know, for a while. So this is not something that I feel like, you know, the hardware is not ready. It seems like the hardware has been ready for a while. And again, that's just my speculation, of course. So then the other kind of scenario was, well, maybe it's about the games, you know, maybe. And my kind of thought was maybe Nintendo doesn't have their games quite ready yet and they want to secure a strong launch lineup. And there's definitely some merit, you know, to say something like that, especially when you look at previous launches. Obviously, the Switch in 2017 was a very strong launch. But initially, you know, yeah, there was Breath of the Wild, but I think what there was like Arms and Snipper Clips, uh, maybe as the other two games. Is that right? Am I saying that right, or am I am I messing that up? There was definitely Breath of the Wild. Snipper Clips was another game, right? But was Arms a launch mm-hmm. title? Arms were, came out later that summer. Okay, so, so a few months later. Yeah. So so I mean, and part of me wonders if Nintendo is wanting to secure a very or a stronger launch lineup of games uh, for their launch window. But you could also poke holes in that argument as well, right? And I think we can definitely talk about that um, here in a minute. So the third option, maybe it's just around marketing. Um, You know, maybe they want to have this system come out next year in March because it you know it kind of goes along with the the original switch launch of 2017 and it's a very familiar kind of launch window for them that time frame so maybe they're just kind of you know pausing until then but any way you look at it it's you're not really sure what the thought process is and for me I personally think uh that it's really about you know the the games aren't quite ready yet but you know that's that's a, that's that's also something like i said that you could easily poke poke holes through in an argument mm-hmm. and and kind of debunk so but to answer the the initial question i know I rambled a bit yeah definitely a surprise um that 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 happened and i think you know i can i can speak for other people that i know in the industry a lot a lot of people were like whoa this is this is strange cuz you know Many of us were expecting to hear something um, this year, you know, about about a, a system coming out, you know, later this year. Um, so to kind of hear those those reports or read those reports that there was or there is a delay till next year definitely is interesting for me and very surprising in many ways. I also think that you know. Nintendo themselves, um, going back to the the lack of software discussion or not quite ready with the software, then you start to question, well, they still have, you know, quite a few first party games that are coming out this year and Nintendo published games that are coming out this year. And you do wonder why they are still sitting on the Switch and not, you know, being 
unveiled for the next hardware because let's just let's just put this out there right and this is a speculation let's say that they did announce the new hardware and they did already announce a launch lineup of games that also included let's say a 3d mario game a new 3d mario game maybe a mario kart title and then you sprinkled in all the first party games that were scheduled to come out this year such as Princess Peach and you know Paper Mario and Luigi's Mansion as Switch 2 titles, that's pretty compelling to me. Plus Metroid Prime, of course, which is still nowhere to be found. That seems like <laughs> a very compelling launch lineup all of a sudden, right? Where you got you got some some quality games. You got a bit of everything to satisfy the needs of you know of your customer base and really incentivize your customers to move on. And and you know you know get on board with the new hardware, but none of that happened, and we're still kind of scratching our heads, wondering, well, what is the next move here, and when will we actually hear about this? So yeah, very surprising um, for myself, and I'm I'm guess I'm I'm curious to hear your thoughts about you know um, what do you think Nintendo is thinking, what their plans are, and how did you feel about this when when they you read the reports that, you know, the system had, you know, potentially or allegedly been delayed till 2025. When I saw the reports hit, I was very surprised the reports had hit as quickly as they had, only because I had heard a few whispers, say about four or five days prior to the reports hitting of a potential delay to 2025. Mm -hmm. And when I first received that information, it took me aback only because I had done the checks in the middle of January leading up to that 2024 predictions episode. And back in January, it was still saying, hey, a 2024 launch. This is what my contacts were saying. So to then record the episode and then in less than a week get information that a delay could be possible, immediately kind of said, saying, okay, is this viable? Is this credible? And I had put out a few feelers out there to various contacts to really find out, is there truth to this? And by the middle of that coming week, I had well over half a dozen sources come back to me, say, yes, early 2025. None were giving any specifics, you know, as far as March or anything like that. It was just early 2025. And then within a day or two, the report started to hit. Yeah. And I thought maybe individuals would have opted to wait a little longer because you did have the industry event of DICE had just taken place. Mm -hmm. You had GDC coming up in a month. So if the news was true, I thought outlets would have maybe wanted to wait until a major industry event had once again occurred just to get a better consensus. So for it to happen as quick as it did took me by surprise. And even the fact that it seemed as though partners were had only been briefed maybe within the last week or two leading up to the information being published was very surprising. Again, I had done those checks in the middle of January and everything was still pointing to 2024. So that's how quick and as you know, quick and recent this development was in terms of being briefed to partners. So it was kind of a situation of, wow, yeah. this was unexpected. And a delay of 2025 from holiday 2024 on paper is not that big of a deal. Right. It's I very mean, minimal when, in terms of, you know, fiscal year impact for Nintendo. Yeah. And just to, to kind of add to that, it, it sounds worse than what it probably is because, you know, 2025, that seems like such a long way away. But I mean, we're, you know, again, we're using the word delay because that's what everyone else was using. Um, but it sounds like it's probably, you know, a four to six month delay at the most, right? So it's not really anything kind of catastrophic, but it just sounds a lot worse because I think there was that expectation that we would have heard something by now or around this time and with the mm -hmm. the likelihood that the system would be kind of launching later this year. And that hasn't right. happened. Well, that's not happening. And that's the thing, is that even in late 2023 and early 2024, you had analyst firms yep. who were doing their predictions for the year. You even had suppliers 
putting out, you know, some guidance suggesting that they were anticipating a launch later this year. So for all of these type of companies to come out with those type of expectations, it was definitely suggesting that there was reason for them to have that knowledge and to have that expectation of a second half of 2024 launch. So within a span of only, you know, four to six weeks to go from a holiday 2024 to early 2025, it just takes you aback for a moment, especially as a consumer, because you are building up that anticipation and that hype that Nintendo is going to have brand new hardware this year. And then to be stripped of that very quickly is just, you know, kind of whiplash of like, whoa, what is happening here? Yeah. And even when you look at the reports that had come out, they do touch on a few of the points you had previously mentioned. You have some that implied it was due to a need for supply, that Nintendo wants to combat the idea of secondhand and scalping. Mm -hmm. You also had the report say, well, this could be related to software, that Nintendo software is not ready, or that Nintendo is just looking to build a sizable collection of software to have ready come launch and even the launch window of the hardware itself. Yeah. And, you know, both of those are definitely viable points. And you also had mentioned, could it be something related to the hardware? Mm -hmm. And I definitely agree with you that this is not a hardware related delay. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like the hardware has been buttoned up for a while. Right. It's gone through the testing. It's yeah. likely just waiting at this point for Nintendo to give it a thumbs up and everything will proceed with it. It can, you know, they can get mass production ready in the coming months and everything. So it's the only other possibility that entered my mind is that, is there that slimmest possibility that the partners and everyone were expecting and building in anticipation of a late 2024 release that maybe Nintendo always had this idea in the back of their mind of late or early 2025 mm -hmm. as a release date for this hardware because depending on how information is relayed to partners it can be very vague of just hey we're targeting 2024 2025 or it could just be here's some dev kits we will relay information to you about a release window in the future and based on when you receive a dev kit let's go back to gamescom of last year you might just you have to pencil in as a company your planning of new hardware arrival, especially if it hasn't been relayed to you. Right. So I do wonder if it is the idea of maybe Nintendo was always kind of planning for early 2025, but partners were anticipating a holiday 2024 launch. And, you know, maybe there's just some something lost in translation, mm -hmm. a little bit of miscommunication here, but that's kind of getting to conspiracy theories. Right. Where you have much more grounded things of, it could be both a need of we want to build sufficient supply. We're also ensuring that we do have a strong launch lineup and we want to guarantee the games are polished. Everything is running at just optimum levels. And we just need a few more months because if it comes out in the coming fiscal year for Nintendo, it doesn't hurt them in any way missing the holiday. They're still going to have the hardware launch in the fiscal year. Investors will be pleased. They will make the money. And as they proved with the Switch, you can launch hardware in March to huge success. Yeah. It really comes down to what that launch lineup is. And as you said, if you have a 3D Mario, if you have a new Mario Kart, mm -hmm. if you have a Switch 2 enhanced version of Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild, yep. the consumer will be there. They will be ready to buy the games. And that's really all Nintendo needs to do. You have to deliver a high quality game. And based on what we know, it t239 based on the leaks and such it's a very capable piece of hardware we're going to see a visual leap that we haven't seen from hardware in consecutive generations in quite a while because if you look at the ps4 pro to a ps5 a leap is there but may not be as big as some have envisioned in their mind but with the switch though it's more capable than a 360 and a ps3 it's not quite at a ps4 or xbox one level so to go from that to you know, PlayStation 4 plus type performance when you factor in DLSS, it, the higher amounts of RAM and so forth, we're getting a true generational leap from Nintendo hardware, similar to what we went from Wii to Wii U. Yeah. And that's going to be big for Nintendo. So it's going to be a very curious thing when we finally do see 
this piece of hardware launch early next year. And, you know, as a consumer, you obviously would have loved Nintendo to have something new this year in terms of hardware. But for Nintendo, we see what the Switch is doing. We see their fiscal reports each quarter. The Switch continues to sell. It's, you know, selling at record pacing in terms of its year on the market. And you have to wonder, was that also a factor here? The Nintendo continue to look at the sales of the Switch and they say, okay, we can afford another four or five months to work on our games, polish them further. And because we haven't hit production on the hardware yet, we have that, you know, we kind of have that availability to postpone this a little longer. I think this delay really exemplifies how fluid this industry is, that nothing is set in stone until the last minute. Yeah, absolutely. You, I mean, you brought up some great points. I think your last point about maybe Nintendo took a look at the books and said, the Switch is doing really well right now. Maybe we should just, you know, push a little bit because we don't want to cannibalize any sales. I think there's definitely some validity there. And it would be very easy for them to look at their numbers and say, look, we've got record sales here. You know, this is unprecedented amount of sales for year number seven. So why would we want to stop this, right? But I think the only response I would give back to that is there still are developers and f there's first parties and, and, and probably some third parties that are working on new generation games right now, next generation Switch 2 titles. So I am curious whether they were briefed on, on that aspect of you know, the Switch 2's plans, right? Because I think it would be interesting if you're, you know, a developer working on the Switch 2 and you've been kind of briefed on Nintendo's plans, but then all of a sudden there's a bit of a pivot because of a delay that, well, hold on, you know, we, we may, well, we're, we're now going to bring the system out in 2025 I think that may cause a little bit of pushback from from your developers. I think there's definitely more to this than we probably don't know about because when you have partners that are working actively on Switch 2 titles, then they need to be briefed uh, accordingly and, and given the appropriate amount of heads up because if Nintendo did indeed pivot, then... You know that definitely has ramifications on you know the, your your publishing partners or your development partners that that are working on on Switch Two titles at at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, especially like the third party publishing partners, because if you are now basing your performance and your revenue on having a game available later this year mm -hmm. that is not happening, that's millions of dollars of investment that you are now delayed yes. a return on and. You don't want to see a long delay, especially if you were targeting, let's just say, a November launch as a third party partner. And now you're told you're not launching that game for another four or five months. It turns into a case of, well, we've invested a lot of money. Right. And now we have to wait. This isn't going to please our shareholders. This isn't good for our business. We're going to need a little bit of help here because we've already invested the money and we're not going to have any income. If nothing's coming in on us, we're just, you're, you're sitting on your hands at this point. Yeah. Which people could say, oh, well, it's good for the games because you get to polish them further. You get to release a higher quality product. That's all true. But that's also more investment. Right. That now you're hoping pays off when you release your game on the Switch to early next year. So, yes, there's benefits, but there's also consequence here. And that can be a tough thing that if you were a Nintendo to relate to a partner, and depending on the size of the company, such a delay isn't really feasible for them. Absolutely. I mean, depending on the size of the partner, it could be catastrophic uh, as far as their bottom line. Uh, I think about this is a completely different um, industry, but I remember when I used to live uh, in back in Kansas City, this was years and years ago, AMC, their, their headquarters was based uh, in, in, in KC, and I had some friends that worked in in the IT department there as software developers working on um, you know their website whatever, 
And I remember AMC had had hired about 200 uh, contractors and employees because they had a lot, a lot of work to do. But more importantly, they were told that this was the year that Avatar 2 was coming out. And James Cameron spectacularly delayed the movie's release maybe three times after that. And those poor contractors all got let go, you know, um, six months later. All of them were were completely axed. And that's kind of, I'm not saying that's what's happening here. But when you, you know, when you make some plans or you have some plans in place and you have partners that, um, are working towards providing deliverables to towards that plan. In this instance, we're talking about games, you know, to suit a launch window. And those plans change, then that can have um, significant ramifications depending on the studio. Yeah, I mean, especially even, you know, like those mid-tier, high-end AA companies, even low-end AAA companies. Mm-hmm. Let's just say a significant project from one of the companies is coming out later this year. Let's let's just use Call of Duty as an example. You have now hired likely an external studio to handle a Switch 2 port of the Call of Duty game. Yep. And you are operating under the idea that you were potentially releasing this in the holiday, let's say November, day and date with the other versions. Now it's coming out a little later. As a company, you might be looking at that release and saying now... Well, our return on investment may not be as high as we originally forecast because we're not getting a day and date release as we had originally envisioned. So we put this much of an investment into the project by hiring such and such company. And now we're looking at it saying, well, could those resources have been better allocated to, let's say, the PlayStation or the Xbox version or the Mm -hmm. PC version of the game? Because we were originally targeting that day and date, and now we could have been afforded a six-month buffer that maybe we could have used that time in a different way. So there's so many permutations that this delay could have impact on partners and the timing and the projects that they are planning to bring to the platform. So there is a lot to consider here. I mean, ideally, this is going to be something that us as a consumer and even those within the industry itself may never see the impacts of it's not going to lead to layoffs or anything of that magnitude right but it's definitely going to impact the investments and the approach to projects a little bit because if you want to have a game be day and date as a holiday release and now you have to wait to let's say march at the earliest to release that game Mm -hmm. it does affect that forecast that you would be giving your shareholders, your investors in your quarterly reports. Because let's just say you had that Call of Duty and you're expecting on Switch 2 and you were projecting a million sales by the end of the fiscal year on that platform. Well, now it's coming out in March. You're not going to be projecting that million sales on the platform anymore because now it's exactly four or five months less time. Yeah. And now, ooh, we have to adjust a lot of our guidance due to this delay as a partner. And you'll never get that type of insight or clarity because of the way these companies do report their guidance. They oftentimes try to hide it. You just see the projected revenue number. You don't know the projects of how they're going to achieve that revenue. But there's a lot of factors that go into play here outside of Nintendo itself. And as a consumer, we just get the frustration of having to wait a little longer. But there are very real impacts that it has on publishing partners and so many other individuals, workers and such. So it's a very interesting thing of how the industry works and just, again, the fluidity of it and how how that momentum, even if it is just a pebble in the ocean, Mm -hmm. those ripples can have long-term effects. So the share price, Nintendo's share price did drop when those reports came out from Bloomberg and VGC. Now, let's let's be let's be clear. I mean, when we talk about a, a, a decline in share share price, it wasn't anything significant. I think it was. I'm looking at actually at it right now. It was it went from 14.92. This is US dollars down to 13.62. But it was you know it was a 
was a drop, right? Um, Mm -hmm. So shareholders were reacting to the Bloomberg reports. Now, normally in that situation, Nintendo investor relations usually comes out to kind of, you know, to mitigate any potential fallout, any damage, uh, maybe make a a blanket nothing statement just to ease the minds of shareholders and or just debunk any speculation and rumors that have been going around. But this time around, Nate, they didn't say anything. I'm not saying they didn't say anything because, you know, their silence is deafening. But why do you think they didn't actually address this at all? Because it did affect the share price and looking at it now, it still hasn't really recovered. It's still it's still not at that fourteen dollar mark or that near the fifteen dollar mark. It's it's kind of hovering at the you know high thirteens again. It's only it's not that much as far as you know the dip, but you know mm-hmm. um, being the company the size of Nintendo, having a, a a drop like that, I think would would you know um, raise some questions. Am I reading too much into this? What what do you think? I don't think you're reading too much into it. But I think it's a situation where if you're Nintendo and you have news of a delay happening and you have yet to reveal or share any official information regarding the successor to the Switch, this is very different from the Gamescom report mm-hmm. and such, where they did come out and say some of the information from these overseas events are not accurate. This was kind of a situation of how can we... How can we give confidence to our investors? You have news of a delay. What are you going to come out with and say, well, we haven't officially announced any plans for our Switch 2? If as an investor, that's not going to give me confidence. The reason I sold my shares is because I had invested, I had bought with that anticipation of you having hardware this year. So if you make a statement that's not encouraging, you could potentially have influence more to sell because now it's going to sound as though if you come out, hey, that report's not accurate. What part's not accurate? Right. The delay to 2025 or the release of early 2025. Hey, as an investor, I think I'd be shaken a bit. Yeah. And rightfully so. This is definitely an unprecedented area where Nintendo continues to refuse to announce their plans regarding a successor to the Switch. And well, they don't we're not in uncharted territory. They, they don't even acknowledge that this hardware exists or, or, or another, a new system even exists. Like, for a couple right, they just danced can, around the question. And mm-hmm. at this point, you know, it's, it's not something they've even acknowledged as being a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they just continue to reaffirm their stance and confidence in the Switch and that they have, you know, that they're committed to the Switch going through 2025 which is fine and we're not in uncharted territory in terms of an announcement to release window as we saw with the nx nintendo in april 2016 announced that the nx would launch by march of 2017 they didn't give us any official or any further details regarding what the nx was going to be we had to wait until october where we got the reveal trailer and the official name for the switch And when you look at Sony and Microsoft's history, they usually do give some sort of, you know, press release with just general details confirming that there are there are planning a successor to their current gen hardware. I believe it was in April or May of 2019 Mm -hmm. that Sony officially announced the PlayStation 5, though I believe it was even 2018 that they had announced work had begun on a successor to the PlayStation 4. Right. With the Xbox, Microsoft went to the Game Awards in 2019 and officially unveiled the Series X. So that can bring us to our next topic of the reveal timing, because last year, going back to Gamescom, there was just that communication that continued to say March, March, March. And yeah. maybe in retrospect, they meant March 2025, and they just didn't mention 2024 <laughs> for that reason. But it seemed as though everything was leading up to March 2024 for a reveal, an announcement, something. And back in January, when I was doing those checks, that still seemed to be that expectation. Mm-hmm. Once the news of the delay came, naturally, have to recheck that. And I have. And unfortunately, I do not have a consensus on when 
the Switch successor will be or is intended to be announced. There are rumors out there suggesting maybe it could be May, maybe it could be June. My personal opinion and speculation is, with GDC coming up, I really wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo did have a press release this month or even in April just to get ahead of things and lay that groundwork of we are working on next generation hardware. We will share more with you in a you know future time. And our target is this coming fiscal year, which concludes in March of 2025. You get all the basics covered. You acknowledge that you have future plans. Investors can get excited that there is something coming beyond the switch. And when more leaks come this year, you've already kind of gotten ahead of it a little bit. Right. The one thing that I would say is a near certainty at this point is that sometime between now, so the recording, Mm -hmm. and the end of May, Nintendo has to acknowledge the existence of this system. We know on May 7th is when Nintendo will do their next investor briefing. By May 7th, they have to acknowledge the future plans beyond the Switch because you have to give investors something to cling to beyond the Switch at that point. If we go from now to the end of May with no acknowledgement of what is coming beyond the Switch, I think that is an error by Nintendo, and I don't think they will make that mistake. I think they will at least have that press release blurb mentioning intent to release a successor to the platform as for a full-on reveal where we see is there a new gimmick the form factor you know a variety of games and such that could be at any time june seems to be one of the rumors that is circulating right now and maybe that is a good venue for them to do maybe they wait till later in the summer something closer to tokyo game show it all really depends on when the hardware is indeed releasing come next year. Yeah. If it is March, you could wait till October like you did with the Switch. If it falls deeper into 2025, naturally those plans are going to adjust further. Again, it comes down to the fluidity of the industry. The dates and months that are circulating right now in rumor and the rumor sphere, that may be the plan at the moment when they were said. But nothing is set in stone until it actually happens so it just comes down to when will the system release and i can say that i have talked to contacts and sources and they are aware that nintendo had reached out to partners and asked for assets of some of the switch 2 games that those partner studios were working on so it does seem as though nintendo is at least gathering assets trailers and such for some type of presentation or announcement. The question is when, Mm -hmm. and unfortunately I don't have clarity or any type of insight on when that will be. I wish I did, but I don't. And it's very painful to say. (laughs) Yeah. It's, it's the million dollar question. You know, when, when is all this stuff going to happen? I think you're right. As far as the investor briefing, something needs to, to give between now and then, if they don't, um, that is, I mean, check that share price again, um, you know, that day, because if there's no announcement, um, I don't think investors would be very happy. I think they'd be very confused. Um, and, and, and honestly, I don't think they'd be in the mood to, to, uh, you know, feel responses from Furukawa's nothing, you know, responses. So, um, but with that, with that all said, Look, it is the million dollar question. When is this system going to get announced? Um, look, you're right. GDC is next week. We're literally less than a week away. Um, and part of me wonders, you know, is this something that they could announce before GDC? But I also wonder if is GDC really that important to Nintendo as far as, yeah, obviously it's something um, that, you know, there is a lot of game developers in the same location um you know for a whole week uh and there's definitely some merit there that maybe they could get ahead of it and talk about 
very, very high level next generation plans and more of a stay tuned. We will have more to, to, to reveal later this year or over the summer or whenever that time frame is. We don't know. But yeah, I mean, I think the next the next six months is probably going to be one of the most important time frames in Nintendo history, believe it or not, even though there's not really much going on right now. Um, we're kind of waiting for things to happen. Nintendo kind of needs to make their move. They need to kind of fire their shot, right? Um, and we we don't really know. Uh, I think only they know, you know, what what, mm-hmm. what the plan is. And, it, and you're right. It is, it is frustrating. You know, it is it is a little... I don't know what the word is, but, you know, I think a lot of us, and and, and I'll be completely frank with you, Nate, like developers, um, we're kind of waiting around to hear something as well. We we want to get our hands on new hardware. We want to start making games for, for new hardware. We don't really know what's going on either. Um, we don't know, you know, if if this delay affected them in any way or not, but um, it just, something just feels a little strange to me you know maybe maybe there is merit that nintendo did have have to kind of call an audible and and push this down down the road a little further than what they were anticipating but i don't know um you know the other the other scenario is nate by the time this episode drops nintendo may have already announced (laughs) something we don't know and that's 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 the real (laughs) that's the real kind of uh issue but i will say this if, if if nintendo does announce new hardware or you know some type of high level press release we're going to come back and re-record this episode i think is probably the right thing to do but as of the making of this episode we don't know um we would like to know but uh hopefully we'll hear something soon yeah so if you're listening to this on the day of release (laughs) it means the switch 2 has not been announced (laughs) that's a good it could be announced the day after but yeah, I mean, when you look at Nintendo's history, they do have a very nonchalant attitude when it comes to announcing next generation hardware. You can look at the 3DS where it was just this little blurb. They put in a press release and threw on Twitter of, yeah, we're working on 3D, a 3D handheld or glasses free 3D. Mm-hmm. We will reveal more at E3. Like, okay. And then again with the NX, just a tweet in the middle of April of working on a next gen system. Yep. We, it will be released by the end of the coming fiscal year, which concludes in March of 2017. And they dropped Stay the code name, more right? information. They, they dropped the NX code name, correct? Was yes. that later? Yep. They dropped the code name then. Um, even the Wii. Awada just walked out at an E3, took it out of his, said, we're working on a revolution. Mm-hmm. Wasn't, didn't see anything. It was just a very nonchalant way of saying within the next 12 to 24 months, you're going to see a next gen successor from us on, you know, from our current gen hardware. And we haven't had that happen here yet. And I know in the lead up to that possibility of a holiday release, and there was still some clinging to the idea that maybe a successor could launch in the early portion of 2024, many thought Nintendo was going to approach it exactly like the switch where you're just going to get a reveal trailer in october and they would release it in march but you always want to provide your investors some sort of insight and guidance because you want investor money you need to excite them you want them to spend money and put it into your company so you're always going to have that announcement at least 12 months out from that release of the hardware or i shouldn't say at least 12 months but 10 to 12 months out so you get that excitement from your investors so we're still within that time frame. It's just going to be a question of, again, when? Will it be March, April, May, June? Are they really going to go a whole investor report and giving guidance of their upcoming fiscal year without acknowledging next generation plans? Yeah. I have a hard time seeing that. I think they, by all means, have to, as you mentioned. If they don't, that stock price is going to see a significant dip. Mm-hmm. Because at that point, as an investor, even as a consumer, you really have to start asking questions of what exactly is happening at Nintendo and why are you not moving on from the Switch? Right. Which is going to lead me into the final topic for this episode. And this may anger people, but I think it's an important subject to discuss. 
Has the Switch outstayed its welcome? I think I think it has. Personally, I think it has. It's been such a great system for many, many years. I've enjoyed my time with it, both you know playing games and making games. But it's time. I, I think it was, honestly, um, it was time probably around the middle of last year where I started to think, I'm, I'm ready for something new here. It's time to move on. So I do think it's overstated its welcome. And I think that's part of the, the confusion and the reason why people just are having difficulties trying to understand what Nintendo's plans are for, for the Switch 2 and, and what, what the roadmap is. Because, yeah, we, we are still seeing some, you know, some first-party titles coming out this year, albeit kind of smaller titles that are more niche, I will say. Um, honestly, Nate, none of these games in their first-party launch lineup or, or publishing really appeal to me this year. And that that's a surprise because every year I've always had something, at least one or two titles that I picked up and played. Last year was Tears of the Kingdom, of course. I also played... Um, Mario RPG, which was a, a great game. Played a couple of others as well. Metroid Prime uh, Remaster 1 was was legendary at the start of last year. This year, um, I don't really have have that. I don't, you know, I, I'm not interested in playing Luigi's Mansion 2. Played it on the 3DS. Great game. Don't really care to revisit it. Paper Mario on the GameCube. I played it back in the day. Didn't really care for it. I'm going to skip so, I mean, and all of a sudden, you know, we, we've heard other stories about, well, Metroid Prime 4's time is has to come this year. But does it does it have to come this year? We don't know, right? I mean, we all, we, we already know that there is a new, um, you know, Pokemon Legends game coming out next year. So there's no guarantees that, that you know, Metroid is going to appear this year in, in any fashion. But to go back to your, your initial point, I do think the Switch has overstated, overstayed its welcome. And yeah, I mean, Nintendo is doing its best to to um, ease those concerns, I will say, uh, by, you know, constantly bringing out games and they're doing the right thing. And again, look, just because the games don't appeal to me doesn't mean that they, they, they don't appeal to the majority of, of other people. I, I definitely acknowledge that. But this is really the first year in a long time where... I've not really been compelled to play my Switch in any meaningful way because I, there's really it's kind of run out of things for me to play on it at, at this at this point. It's a very complex topic to approach because it's going to differ individual from individual, especially when you factor in backlog and mm -hmm. all factors like that. So I think the way I would approach the question of whether or not it has overstated its welcome isn't so much whether or not the quality of games remains high as much as just personal interest in the platform itself and whether or not it has waned when you look at upcoming projects and as you mentioned there are some high quality games that are coming to the platform this year paper mario a thousand year door luigi's mansion 2 you just had another code you have princess peach coming out in just a couple of weeks these are all quality games and I'll even go back as far as last year with Tears of the Kingdom. It's that when a platform begins to age, even if it is getting quality games, look at the 3DS. After the introduction of the Switch, you were getting some quality games like the Fire Emblem Warriors. You had oh, Samus yeah. Returns. Oh, yeah, absolutely. A great game. Mm -hmm. But you do eventually hit a fatigue point with hardware where you want something new. Yeah. And even if the games are quality, you begin to lose interest in the product because you want something better. And as I played Tears of the Kingdom, I was definitely feeling that impact where as I'm playing it, just by being exposed to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you begin to look at the game saying, man, I wish I was playing this on something better. I wish Nintendo had new hardware so I could play this at a higher resolution, better frame rate, more detail, greater textures, not at the level of those platforms, but just beyond a system that is now six, seven years old with technology that's now near a decade in age. 
So when I say that the Switch has overstayed its welcome to me, it's just that I'm no longer getting excited about the projects as I would have been four or five years ago. Yeah. Because it also factors in the concept of the Switch to, to a point. When the Switch came out, it was exciting. This was a hybrid system, a first of its kind, something the industry had never seen before. Now you have Steam Deck, you have the ROG Ally, and I'm not saying those are competitive platforms mm -hmm. to the Switch. They aren't. But you're seeing platforms of a similar style and approach far outperforming what the Switch can do. Yeah, I, You can I, play Gears of War 5 on a ROG Ally. Yep. And that's mind-blowing to a certain extent. And again, it's a very niche market who would buy that product for $700. But when I'm looking at the future releases for the Switch, Paper Mario, even you know Metroid Prime 4, the Fire Emblem 4 remake, right. these were projects, had they released a year, two years ago, I would have been like, yeah, day one, absolutely. They look fantastic. Can't wait. Now it's kind of just hitting that point of, well, yeah. Will they be enhanced on next generation hardware? Right. I mean, the question is, well, should I just wait and play it on the next generation hardware? Because, you know, we we come to the, the conclusion that any game that kind of comes out next year will be a cross gen game. We again we don't know that for a fact. Right. But that's what it's safe seems assumption. Like. Yeah. Like, yeah, it just comes down to a question of how is Nintendo approaching the backwards compatibility? Will we get enhancements right out of the box, similar to a PlayStation 4 game being played on a PlayStation 5, where you'd get those pro enhancements, or you'd have, like, the frame rate smoothed out, mm -hmm. and maybe the resolution would get a slight boost? Or are we going to see what Xbox does with the smart delivery, where you could have that native SKU? Don't know how exactly they'll approach backwards compatibility or if it will just be basic backwards compatibility with maybe having that upgrade option of, oh, you can get the Switch 2 SKU of this game for a $10 upgrade fee, yeah. similar to what we've seen Sony do. But it just comes into that excitement of a project. Like when Metroid Prime 4 is finally shown, like, yes, I'm going to be excited to see the game and I will buy it. But it's also just going to hit that point of, okay, can this finally be that last Switch game for me? Because I'm looking at some of the third-party games coming to the platform, and they've lost their luster only because that curiosity factor is beginning to diminish. Where I would have looked at a game of Doom 2016, Doom Eternal, The Witcher 3, early on in the Switch lifecycle, even though they were inferior to the Xbox or PlayStation version, it was Ooh, but I can play it on a handheld. It was new. You were curious. How could this run? Would it run sufficient? Now there are games coming to the platform where I'm looking at saying, I'm not even curious to see how you run on the system. Yeah. Because I've moved on beyond that, which is natural. And there will be individuals listening to this saying, no, there's still a lot of games coming to the Switch. I am happy with the platform and more power to you. I am glad yes. that the Switch is meeting your needs and continues to satisfy what you want in the gaming sphere. But we are at that point where the switch for me is just becoming antiquated. And you can look back at the PlayStation three, Xbox 360 generation and say, well, those systems were on, you know, market for a similar period of time. Each one also tried to introduce a second wind. You had the yep. connect yep. with the Xbox 360, That's which is exactly right. Yep. Did a huge thing for the platform at that time. Yeah, it wasn't a long-term solution, but they tried something new. We haven't seen that huge innovation from Nintendo when it comes to the Switch of a new concept or even, I hate to say it, that mid-gen refresh maybe would have benefited them in a significant way here. We just didn't get that. Like you have the OLED screen which is only a mid-gen refresh if you primarily play in handheld. Mm -hmm. If you do not, that system offers you nothing. Right. And that's fine. It's just, we're very, as we said even last year, in a post-Tears of the Kingdom world, we're very much in that transitionary period where we're still getting quality games. They are on the lower end of investment. They are with smaller franchises. They're good games. 
but they're definitely catering to a different audience because people are getting ready to move on or they're investing in other products and their time is being shifted away from the switch to a certain degree. And it could be to novels. It could be to any type of entertainment. It doesn't have to strictly just be in the video game environment and ecosystem. It's just the switch is showing its age, yeah. which is fine. But I would say it has overstayed its welcome for me. It's just not exciting me the way it used to. And I'm ready for something new. Well, I will say, I will say this. Um, you know, when I travel, I normally bring a switch with me. This time around, Nate, I'm packing the Steam Deck because for for the reasons you just said, like there are more interesting things for me to play on my Steam Deck right now that I want to play, um, which will run better and look better overall. And for me, that really is the bottom line. I think the Switch has been a fantastic system for such a long time, but it is time for something new. And you bring up some really interesting points about the games that are coming out for the Switch that we still have yet to see. And I'm going to pick on Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Prime 4 could be an absolute masterpiece of a game, but it's been somewhat diluted uh, due to the fact that we are indeed at the end of the Switch's life. This is the sunset era, a period where the sun is setting as we speak on, on the hardware. And it could be an absolute masterpiece of a game but unfortunately, a lot of people may just kind of sit on it and say, well, I think I'd rather play this and on a more capable piece of hardware that runs better, looks better, sounds better. And, you know, it's kind of the cutting edge hardware that, that um, you know, Nintendo is, is finally going to, to give us at some point. And I think there's a lot to be said about that, where if you kind of wait too long, um, People tend to, like you kind of alluded to, go and do different things and 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 find entertainment elsewhere. And I think that's what we're starting to see here. Yes, the Switch is continuing to sell well. Yes, it's still great hardware, but I do think it's overstated its welcome as well. I think it's time for for something new. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this episode will. Stoke the flames, if you will, um, and we'll we'll start to see some <laughs> announcements coming soon because I'd like to see them. Yeah, I mean, it kind of reminds me to that transitionary period that we saw of cross-gen releases on the PlayStation 5 and even Xbox Series X, that if you were to play God of War Ragnarok, Miles Morales on your PlayStation 4, you know, like fantastic. You didn't have to go out and buy a PlayStation 5. But for me, just the way I interact and consume media yeah, I had no interest in playing Miles Morales or, you know, Ragnarok on a PlayStation 4. If I were going to experience those games, it had to be the best way possible, which was the PlayStation 5. And that's where I am with the Switch. If Metroid Prime 4 comes out, let's say this holiday, I almost want them to announce intent that there will be a next gen version at some point in 2025, I'm not going to yeah. say it would be a launch game because I don't think this is, I don't think a Switch 2 SKU is a thought in Retro's mind at the moment. I think Retro is focused purely on getting the Switch version out the door. Agree. And then a year later, maybe they can do a native port to the Switch 2. I would almost want them to have that transparency of that's a plan with the game. Because then I would say to myself, I will wait the year or 18 months so I can play the game in the best form possible. And I get that's bad business. You want to sell it to the current Switch base. You don't want people to wait a year of a potential better version. But that's how I want to experience the game. Because as games get more pricey, I am less likely to double dip. So if there is you know, that hypothetical Switch to native version of Metroid Prime 4, in development in any form at any point in time in the future. Yeah. Please let there be an upgrade path of 10 or $15 mm. where I don't have to buy the game again for 60 or $70 on the switch Two. let me just enhance my switch one version buy our backwards compatibility or that upgrade path. And then everything is fine. But 
I'd say Tears of the Kingdom was that starting point for me of just being able to play that game and say, I really wish I could be experiencing this on superior hardware. Because as said, you look at some of those cross-gen PlayStation 4 and Xbox series games, and you wouldn't want to play them on the Xbox One. You want to play them on the best means possible, and that is a next-gen console. And that's why I look at titles like Princess Peach, Luigi's Mansion 2. They very much look like Switch games. And that's fine, but those aren't games I need to play super enhanced. Yeah. They're basic in terms of geometry and even world size and scope. So I can accept that. But when you get to those bigger triple A budget games of Tears of the Kingdom and Prime 4 scale, I want to experience them on superior hardware. And that's just me. I know there's going to be a lot of people who'd be more than fine playing it on their current Switch. And again, I commend you. I wish I could consume the product similar to you. But if I know that there's a superior way to play something, that is how I'm going to do it. Yep. Because that's exciting. That's new. That's fresh. Yeah. And that's just how I operate. I agree. I'm exactly the same. I, I'm ready, Nate. I'm ready for some new hardware. I think, um, you know, we've, we've, we've covered it. It's, um, it's going to be an interesting year, I think. See how all this plays out. I do think you're right, though. I mm -hmm. think before the investor relations meeting in June, we'll have some more visibility on what the plan is, but we will just have to see. Yeah, we are now spectators in the arena of Nintendo. We are waiting to see what they have next, and we'll look forward to whatever it is. The rumors have suggested that there could be an believe an indie showcase this month followed by a general direct sometime in april and then maybe that switch to announcement or reveal in may or june so next three to four months could potentially be very interesting for nintendo fans and when these announcements happen if they happen you know we'll be giving our thoughts and opinions on it as it occurs but mm -hmm. yeah that will conclude your return episode here and with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me this episode, as always. Always a pleasure, Nate. And uh, we, will, we will do this more frequently going forward. Thank you. Uh, thanks to everyone for putting up with me in my absence. But um, yeah, it's good <laughs> to be back. Yes, MVG is why we have accumulated a <laughs> massive treasure trove of Streamlabs questions that we will get to in the near future. Maybe we'll, Ideally, do, the maybe we'll do an all Streamlabs episode. I thought about that actually. <laughs> we'll get through everyone. Don't worry. We 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 keep all the the questions. So just keep them coming. We'll get to them. Yes, we will get to them in the near future. We will at least, yeah, either be a whole Streamlabs dedicated episode, or we will start to get through them in the next episode. But let us know your thoughts on the Nintendo Switch to delay to twenty twenty five the potential of reveal timing and whether or not you think the switch has overstayed its welcome as we are now in 2024 in the comments section below. And if you liked the episode, give it a like, if you didn't give it a dislike and until next time, continue to embrace the hate. Mm -hmm.